So I gotta be on my best behavior now. <laughs> I mean, are you are you ever? I just, I just. <laughs> you said that real quick. So I did. Like, I, I did. I, I, you know, just <laughs> you know, you know. Whatever. All right. Okay. okay. I'm ready. Okay. FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast, where, uh, sorry, we're more morning drive time meets late night talk show as we aim to entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. We're recording live from the south side of Wakanda in little new Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive. So, how are you today? Who, me? Yes, you, Courtney. <laughs> I am doing great. Um, I have just um, come back from pulling weeds in my yard. They've mm-hmm. been bothering me for weeks now, but I just did not have the strength nor the mental fortitude to go out there and take care of it. But today I did and I didn't finish, but it looks much better. And I'm not, I'm no longer like embarrassed that my front yard uh, was so unkempt. Oh, and so weeds. disgraceful and covered in weeds. Yes. So now, this I'm is also better. known as weed eating. Am I correct? So no, I, in my text, I, mm-hmm. to you, I said it wrong. Cause weed eating is a thing, but it's, it's when you use a machine to like edge or essentially take care of the weeds. But when you do it by hand, it's just weed pulling. Ah, okay. So or that actually eating. is a term. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So weed eating is an actual term, but, um, we call it either weeding when you pull it by head, weeding or mm-hmm. weeding if you're from the south, um, or pulling weeds. So mm, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, there is a pun in here somewhere to refer to Joss Whedon, <laughs> but I don't know what it is or where it is. But let's it'll get him out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get him out of here, but it'll come to you eventually. It will, it will. A quick shout out to the Nevers. I I had um Watched the first episode and I described it as thus. It is like drinking a diet soda where you enjoy the majority of it, but then you get that gross aftertaste once you mm-hmm. see like directed by, written by, blah, blah, blah. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, yep. yeah, that's gross. And it kind of keeps you from wanting to further enjoy it. It's just overall. Yeah. Ruined. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I get it. But yeah, that's that's to come later. I'm doing overall well. It's uh, the the allergy season is mm-hmm. among us for mm-hmm. although for people like me, it's always kind of year round, but especially mm-hmm. in the spring. And I'm I'm actually using my mask a bit more, even when I'm just outside, yeah. even by myself, because I'm yeah. thinking, hey, this could prevent the little pollens from that's attacking. Right. Yeah, that's so, right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, that's one thing I didn't even think about. Because for me, you know, doing yard work and planting things and stuff is kind of a stress reliever Mm -hmm. or it it often is. Well, today it was. And so I just went out there after changing clothes. I just went out there and started. But it I was about 90 percent done with what I was going to do today before I realized, huh, I should probably wear a mask because I started sneezing. and, And normally, you know, this time of year, sometimes I'll get the sneezes or I'll feel a little bit congested. But. I wouldn't say that I have allergies. It's just, yeah. you know, just the pollen and things and just the spring air. But yeah, masking up when you're outside is, you know, it just covers all the bases. I recall this envy I had over you in regards to such things as uh, not having allergies, but the more time you spend outside. And sometimes it's latent too. Not, I'm not wishing it upon anyone. Maybe my worst enemies, but you're no, nowhere near that that category of people. <laughs> so you. Good. But yes. but yes, I it was a little bit of envy of you not having 
allergies, but apparently they're, you know, the more time you spend outside, you know, yeah, you know, then, we, then everybody is susceptible to it, you know? Right, right. But I have read or did I read the entire study? I think I probably just maybe a couple headlines, but the fact that there are less or there, there have been less uh, people with sicknesses or mm-hmm. the flu in particular because mm-hmm. of masking. And it just mm-hmm. goes to show you that, uh, hey, masking works, not just with uh, COVID, but with the flu and maybe the common right. cold and, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. science. Yeah. Like none of my kids were were sick last year, not right. due to like colds that you would pick up at, at school. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one a less thing, thing to worry about. Meanwhile, like the, what is it? Day quills kind of a little sad. Their sales probably dropped a little bit. <laughs> probably. It's Maybe like, not nah. though. Cause you could take that for, if you have like a regular cold or cold, God forbid COVID, you know? So true, true. And they, they still have the Z quill too. So you could be up late at night uh, being concerned about things like <laughs> they're out there, the, the things, the viruses, everything. And you just need some sleep and some solace, which I've never tried yet. So um, I'll have to, I haven't either. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I'm a fan of the um, the Ali melatonin gummies mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. my friend Sterling introduced me to oh. many years ago. Um, <laughs> so I am now a fan of them. And you know, if I'm feeling bad, Benadryl does knock me out pretty good. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of covered. Good, good. And yes, we 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 are definitely a melatonin household, mostly for the wee one because oh which he by the way he absolutely loves because every night he'll he'll plead for two of them not just one but two and we realize it's not because and he will say like i need to sleep i need to get to sleep but it's not because of that and we got him to admit that it is because he likes the way they taste so instead we'll just give him a gummy bear (laughs) ah do you tell him that it's the same like peel or do you are you truthful Oh, we're truthful. We're, okay. We're, we're, Cause he knows what it is. And, and yeah. in fact, all of his gummies, like he has, he takes the multivitamin. He takes say, um, the one for immunity. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. Um, well, basically it's like an elderberry kind of flavoring. Um, mm-hmm. he takes one of those and then the, mel- and the melatonin. So he'll take all of those. Um, but yeah. what, what he'll do is he'll take his time eating them like they're snacks and we're <laughs> like, just hurry up and eat it and go to bed and go to you sleep. You just need to go to bed, get out of here. <laughs> It'll take like not even ex- an exaggeration, maybe good between five to 15 minutes for him to consume oh, these three little gummies because he's he'll... probably just like stalling too. Because oh, I, I think they absolutely. all do that. So yeah. he's he's trying, he's beating the game. What are you talking about? He's not beating it past me because I know what he's doing. I'm like, <laughs> just get him in your mouth and go to bed because, yeah, it's a whole process like my vitamins. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because everything, <laughs> it's fun. it's playtime all the time. All the time, yep. yep. It's it's a lot. Let's so. talk all the time. Let's play all the time, even at bedtime, especially at bedtime. Oh yes, we have a little <laughs> camera set up in his room just to make sure that you know if if he's actually asleep, and we'll check mm-hmm. in ten thirty. Nope, he's got his little Legos doing who knows what, uh, mm-hmm. like building something or talking to them, and or you know watching Netflix while he's playing with whatever toy that he has. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be asleep. Go to sleep. And sometimes we'll actually talk through the camera, like, you know, close your eyes, go to sleep. Because uh, his internet, I have set it up so his internet and everything in his room will turn off at 11. So he yes. better not still be awake. So yes. we're going in- to, we're going to institute some things like that, you know, here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about that. All right. At, well, first I, at first, I got, I mean, you know very well how I feel about smart things, but you and life has made me a believer mm-hmm. <laughs> to make the things happen because they are there to increase your livelihood and your quality of life and your sanity. And they should be incorporated in all the things. So, yeah, we're going to have to talk a little bit about that. 
please. We, we and shall. Thank you. We, we shall. Uh, not on this particular show, although we probably will do a special episode maybe in the future. Just, you know, you and smart objects or you and Alexa. I can say Alexa. <laughs> I can say computer because they are not in this particular room. Uh -huh. However, <laughs> I cannot completely co-sign on Alexa or the smart devices that actively listen to you. Mm -hmm. Because they are actively listening to you and they will, if you use like certain words, like I said, computer, computer is actually how we activate Alexa, but it's only in my bedroom. So I may accidentally say computer and then Alexa thinks I'm talking and I'm still talking. And all of a sudden be like, I don't know what you said. And like, I wasn't talking to you. And now Alexa will continue to respond immediately after you finish speaking. So if you say, Alexa, turn off the bedroom light and the light goes off, you can say thank you. And then Alexa will be like, anytime. Because yes, one time it did make a fart noise afterwards. No, it didn't. Yes. Why it did? I don't know. Right. Like, I, why would you do that, Alexa? That's rude. It is rude, but it was also <laughs> hilarious because I told <laughs> Ashley about it and she's been waiting patiently. Each time we tell Alexa to do something, she'll say mm -hmm. thank you. And each time it's been a different response. So interesting. So they're getting smarter. They're learning. Oh, my God. I mean, the one thing I don't want to happen, and I know it, I've told you this, I told you this many times and I've told it to Ashley and I'm like, I what I don't want to happen is what I remember reading about many years ago. Someone had one of the little like Alexa devices in, in their house. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, they heard laughter coming from it. At See, some no, point. probably it was hacked, but I think or, so. Or Alexa was coming alive. Either, either one could be that some kind of sentience going on. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either one. Mm -hmm. Now in a related topic, because this is on my list and I actually didn't write it down, but I meant to, um, mm -hmm. I know we are, I, I'll use this term lightly, we're fans of the show Black Mirror. At least I know mm -hmm. that I am. And I desperately want to do a rewatch. And, I pro and I'm think I was thinking about it today. Maybe I'll do a rewatch with uh, Ashley because she hasn't watched any episodes yet. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to go back and rewatch to see how far we've come, uh, what things have already taken place that was quote unquote predicted, um, and um, what we have to look forward to. In the future and i mentioned all this because it was trending this morning because oh, okay. yes as why it's sadly for the <laughs> same reasons it keeps trending every other time that black mirror is trending on twitter and that's because something in the real world has happened that mm -hmm. the show has more or less kind of predicted mm -hmm. what happened oh gosh can can we talk about that or we, yes we can and i feel okay. like the proper way to talk about it first, because, um, yeah, let me just go ahead and where is it at? Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah. So I brought in the spooky, the spookums zone theme because it is a little spooky. But. Mm -hmm. I believe this was in New York City. It was either New York or Chicago. I don't know. I saw blinking lights in the background that either said Chicago, Chicago, um, <laughs> New York or Chicago. This is uh -huh. the future. This is the future. They come together somehow. They because I know they're like thousand miles apart. Anyway, um, in one of these metropolitan cities, the uh, the police were using such a. I know you've seen the the Boston Dynamics robot dogs with the weird legs mm -hmm. and just hopping mm -hmm. about and playing tennis whatever and it's they use this to go assist in an operation to uh, apprehend a criminal or criminal yes i did see this yes yes so there is such an episode like this on black mirror it's in stark black and white i don't recall oh. if you've seen this episode because the way uh -huh. you're Okay, it's it's basically the episode that's always referenced anytime Boston Dynamic or any of these robotic companies make these mm -hmm. robo dog creature things. Mm -hmm. And now they're actually being used in real life. And at some point, someone is going to attach some kind of um, weapon, if you will, which is much like what happens in one of these particular episodes, which I uh, the name of the episode suddenly escapes me. And I, I know exactly what it is as soon as I see it. But um yeah, it's that not, episode, huh? Uh, I was gonna guess, but it's probably wrong. So never mind. It, it's possible. Um, trying to look. I was thinking San Juniper. Not that one. 
because I did one? I did make a tweet regarding all of this, and I'm like, uh, most of these episodes end in some kind of doom or not happiness, except for maybe two. And the one that you're thinking of, San Juniper, is actually one of them that ends on a happy note. So, right, okay. I just remember because wasn't that one in back, black and white, or am I? I haven't seen any any of those, so <laughs> right, not I, any of the new ones. <laughs> Right, because the one I think I wanted you to see, you still haven't seen, or many of them you still haven't seen because you're afraid. Well, they always give me the the vibes, and not the good vibes, so I don't know. I just kind of keep away when I can, <laughs> you know? I do. Just I protecting do. my heart and my and, mind. And <laughs> your outlook on the future, so yeah. Well, no, it's pretty bleak, well, yeah, but I don't well, I mean, need help. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that that's a good better way of putting it uh the episode I'm, i was thinking of was called metalhead and it's in ah, okay. four, episode five and it's in stark black and white and mm -hmm. should you watch this episode um it's yeah you're right it's probably one of those episodes is probably better if you didn't see because of what may soon come so yeah mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. see mm -mm. And it's why mm -hmm. it, it's it's why I'm like, have none of you seen this series? Why do you try to keep make? Why are you trying to make these things smarter and more agile? Mm -hmm. Because this episode is going to come to life, and they're either they'll become sentient or what have you. I don't know. But even while I'm talking about it, I still want to go back and rewatch this episode. But I think I'm going to wait, and I think I'm going to actually do what I said and maybe watch it with Ashley, and maybe we'll have like a an episode breakdown after each one and kind of get her thoughts on it and, you know, see how Ooh, she I would feels. love to listen to that and hear that. Sounds like yes. it would be fun. Yes. So yeah. I'll, 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 you know, throw that idea to her, see how she likes it because I know she hasn't seen it. And um, we were recently discussing about shows that she's watched that I haven't watched and shows I've watched that she hasn't watched. And that's mm -hmm. one of them. So mm -hmm. That is uh, one of many things that's been going on. I've um, have you ever had your like ears cleaned before, like washed out? Not professionally, no. I mean, oh. I clean them myself. But I that's all I the, got. I forgot there was an actual term for it, but I had my last doctor visit, which went very well, except that was a new experience for me. I, and it was an experience, and it was one that I was like, okay, can this stop now, please? But um, they basically take a bottle with warm water or, or maybe it was hot. I'm not sure, but I just know at some one point it just felt like it was like very, very, very warm. And I think there were hydrogen peroxide was in it too. And basically there was a lot of earwax, earwax buildup within my ears and it wasn't anything on my part. Like it was the amount of earwax that came out was astounding to me. Really? Okay. Now, I do have, before we continue, I have more mm -hmm. questions. Okay. Um, but before, before we continue, why, if you can say, and if it's not too personal, why were you getting your ears clean? Were you there for your hearing? No, or... I, was, I was there for my annual checkup, which okay. everyone should do. Make sure you go see your doctor and, mm -hmm. you know, they'll mm -hmm. maybe schedule it months in advance because, you know, reasons. But um, Sure. And they've told me before. Like, hey, make sure you clean your ears, which, you know, even before I even went, I made sure I was like, okay, let me get in there. And I did not use a Q-tip. I know that they say not to. So I just mm -hmm. you know, did what I could, cleaned out what I what I could see from, you know, mirrors and whatnot. And mm -hmm. but them being doctors and, and healthcare professionals, they could see much mm -hmm. more. And mm -hmm. like, you've got a lot of buildup in here. I'm like, I thought I cleaned mm -hmm. it. I thought mm -hmm. I did a good job cleaning my ears. And then mm -hmm. what they did they flushed it out? That's I think the term I was looking for. Having your ears flushed and using this whole apparatus right. thing, yes, with like hot water and, mm -hmm. and um, probably some sort of solution, safe right. solution for your ears. Right. And I think it might have just been hydrogen peroxide. Perhaps I'm not sure. Yeah, and probably hmm? was it pressured? Like, did you feel pressure when they flushed your ears, or was there, it just there was flushing? pressure? <laughs> there, there was the, the pressure, and it definitely was hydrogen peroxide because of okay. Uh, after much of the flushing sounds and I had a, I ended up using a, uh, holding a cup, a plastic cup under my ear because of all the water that was coming out. Oh, uh, wow. We tried using one of those little bedpan things, but it wasn't quite shaping up to my face the way it should have been. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everything kept, just kept dripping down like my, my neck and then on my shirt and just, and she's like, I'm really trying not to soak you. I'm like, I, 
well, you're doing a fantastic job. I was, we were joking <laughs> the whole time. It was, it was great. We're having a good time. Well, good. so kind of, because uh, <laughs> I was, one child had done this before and described it to her as sounding like Rice Krispies at some point because of the hydrogen peroxide. Hmm. Sure. And, okay. That and makes it's sense. A, it, yeah, it's a whole lot of crip, crickling and crackling that happens, like almost yeah. after a firework has been set off. Right, the bubbles and, and just fizzing, yeah. a lot of fizzing. Mm -hmm. Like someone poured, you know, a can of soda in your ear and pss, just yeah. And that was cool for a little while. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm done with this now. Can we stop? <laughs> I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. And just the the constant pressure because they're also using like a like a turkey baster just to push everything in the ear. I'm like, <laughs> let's stop this process now because it's like <laughs> this is almost almost torture. Like this could be used as a torture device, probably maybe. I don't yeah. Know. But her efforts were not in vain because once she finally revealed what it was she was after what she could see what i could not see <laughs> uh -huh. is this hunk of earwax that was uh, oh um trying to and i still like at the time i wanted to say it was a, as big as a beetle but that could mean anything wow. uh, it was huge like there was no Whoa. way i could have gotten it out myself because i had no idea that was even in there and she was like has nothing necessarily to do with you. Some people's ears are just shaped this way and they have to come in like every couple months or so to get their ears flushed. So I'm like, Oh, okay. And I did, I feel a little weird. Like not necessarily, I felt like a little bit of lightheadedness, but also like, I think I hear better. Maybe. <laughs> I was about to say like, how's your hearing? Are you able to like hear colors now? Or are you just, is it more well, clear, more clear I, than before the flushing? I heard what I I assumed to be was a mouse peeing on a cotton ball uh, a couple of blocks down. <laughs> so, I mean, things are much more vivid. That's like colors, I didn't hear the colors, but they were brighter for some reason. So, <laughs> so you get your ears clean, and somehow your eyesight is also improved. Eyesight, like um, I heard smells, so I'm like, hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Huh. I think I need to go get my ears flushed. Maybe it'll like help with with creativity. I bet. I mean, All, when was this? When was this flushing? When, this, when did this, this happen? This was a couple of weeks ago, and like I okay. think I had even had texted you like, "Oh yeah, we're doing all the things," and I wrote out a whole man uh, manifest of things that I was going to do. <laughs> you did. Um, you so. did. That's why. Okay, you had a clarity all around um, because your ears were. Now you know they say. Well, and not just they, like science has proven that, um, you know, your balance comes from your, your inner ears, right? So like mm -hmm. if your inner ears are infected or something is off, then that kind of affects everything else, like your balance and a lot of other things that I can't think of right now. Right, right. Because I'm not a scientist. Um, so, but that makes sense, you know, clean those ears and it's going to affect your other senses. It's going to clear up your brain fog, maybe a little bit for the time being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. I'm all for that. Yeah, there was just so much clarity. Like, was, again, I think because of the lightheadedness and, and then I had to get blood like right after that. But I was kind of back to normal by then. And I'm I feel like I'm pretty good these days when it comes to like the needles taking the shot, which uh, I believe, I, I think we're both fully vaccinated now, or, or you have, have you gotten your second one yet? I know I got mine and, and had, you know, my side effects. <laughs> uh -huh. I am fully vaxxed. Well, I've gotten the second dose. So I'm still in that three week period. Cause it's, I've, I've heard that you're, it hasn't like fully kicked in until at least, or about three weeks after the second dose. So I'm about a week into well, about two weeks now two weeks into my um you know second dose but I have gotten that second dose and phew what a relief <laughs> it is a relief yes and uh I'm so you didn't have any side effect issues you were good for the most part I did have some side effects I was a little feverish but honestly feverish for me is is like normal or slightly above normal um temperature so I did have a like 99 fever, 99 degree fever once. I was at 98.6, which is again normal, but it's not normal for me. <laughs> so mm, okay. I was running a bit hot. Um, I was very fatigued, um, had some achiness and some chills, but 
it was actually really mild. Um, oh, that's good. I felt that's it. Good. It was noticeable, but I could, when I talked, I could talk regularly like this. It, I didn't get out of breath. I didn't, you know, couldn't mm. not breathe or something. So it was, it was noticeable, but very mild and didn't last for over 24, maybe 36 hours. So it was, it was an easy run. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. And wasn't like me where I just felt like I was out of commission for at least 24 hours. So where I just had to go lay down for a little bit because yeah. I was feeling achy, like like basically like mm-hmm. I had the flu. That's how mm-hmm. I, it mm-hmm. felt for me. So and mm-hmm. I did have a fever and mm-hmm. um, which didn't break, but at the same time allowed me uh, time once I realized I wasn't going to work the next day. I'm like, yep, I'm going to stay home. And hey, look what just released that 17 hour cut of Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League. So I had time to watch it. So essentially you planned this. Is that what I'm hearing? Not at all. Like I think the the, the release happened at the same time, like a couple mm-hmm. or a day before I got the shot, which was not planned. Like they actually called me the two weeks prior when I got that first one, because my holes that they had me booked much later than what happened. So <laughs> everything just fell into place. Sure, I was like, uh-huh. When else am I going to get time to mm-hmm. watch this epic? And uh, it all just worked out. And then after it was over, I went back to sleep because I had already called out and like, I'm going mm. back to sleep now. So right. And it right. was all good. But yes, fully vaccinated. So we are able to go out and about and do all the things. And I'm looking forward to doing a number of things, much to the chagrin of people that <laughs> have kind of like, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to word it gently because they're, they're friends of ours and mutuals, but they're like advising or encouraging me not to go to one of the places that bring me so much joy. And that is to the movie theaters because the movies, the movies, Mm -hmm. things are coming out and I want to see them. Like I did watch Godzilla or Kong and Godzilla or Godzilla and Kong. I forgot what the order Mm -hmm. is. And I enjoyed it. One of those, one of those, Mm -hmm. one of those. I enjoyed it for what it was, which is giant monsters fighting each other. And, but it wasn't the same because I need to see it on a big screen. So I, I very much want to go back to go see it on the big screen. And there are also a number didn't of other you, things coming out. Hmm? Didn't you hit the movie theaters at least once because you saw Tenet in the, in the theaters. That is right? correct. That is correct. Yes. <clears throat> but you haven't, is that really, is that the only movie that you've seen in the past year or like in the, in the theater or did you see something else and you just didn't tell me about it? <laughs> the way you said it was like so like judgmental but no that is the that is the only one that i've seen everything else i either like there really wasn't much that was playing it or if it was mm-hmm. they managed to put it out on streaming at the same time it's like yeah i guess maybe wonder woman would have been one that would have been on the list and there was a lot of alliteration if i look back at what i just said <laughs> but um i didn't really feel the need to see that in the theater and i'm kind of glad mm-hmm. that i didn't because I still haven't seen it at all. (laughs) Oh, well, I'm going to tell you now it's a bit on the, for me, for me, it's a bit on the meh side, but you can go to um, Megasheen's podcast. I did uh, a review with them and we all talked about it. So, and I think we all kind of, kind of fell on on the same area where we're like, "Eh," you know, it was what it was. There were some high points, some low points, whatever. Yeah. I think we liked the first one a bit better collectively, Mm -hmm. I think. So there's that. But as for what's coming in theaters that I want to see, one in particular is only going to be in theaters, and that is Scott Pilgrim versus the World, which, again, I'm not sure if that's a movie you've seen at all. Well, no, but I remember you tried to get me to watch it, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't know there was another. Is it is it a like a reshowing of the original or is it a, a new one? As far as I know, it's, it's going to be a re-showing. Like they okay. are putting it out again because I believe it's their 10th anniversary, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I never saw it in theaters and I wish really? that I did. Yeah. Um, and I got to show it to Ashley about a year ago. Just, you know, on a whim, like this is, hey, this is one of my favorite movies. Check it out. And I I recall this because I think it was her birthday weekend and she had requested like something from McDonald's. And I had to take several trips back and forth to McDonald's because they kept forgetting the sweet and sour sauce. And she absolutely needs her sweet and sour sauce. And I'm like, ratafragit because I'm not I'm usually one. And this is one of my flaws. 
and I have many, but one of my flaws is I don't always check the bag after I get whatever I'm getting from the drive through I just go order the food, assume everything is there, get all the way back to my mm-hmm. destination, mm-hmm. find that something is missing. And she was like, I want my sweet and sour sauce. So yeah, I had to go back out and get the sweet and sour sauce. And I didn't want to just, I could have made things so much simpler and just gone inside and like, hey, you forgot the sweet and sour sauce. Can I have a few packets? But no, I went back mm-hmm. to the drive through decided to order more chicken nuggets <laughs> with more sweet and sour <laughs> sauce. And mm-hmm. what did they do? Not put any more sweet and sour sauce in the bag. So I had to actually get out of the car and get some. So yeah. Lesson learned? Very much so. And the sad All thing right. is it happened again about like a year later. And, uh, but it was an easy fix because I thought ahead, see, see, this is me being smart and bought a whole mm-hmm. bottle of sweet and sour sauce that's at the house. But here's the, here's the question though. Is it the mm. same sweet and sour sauce that McDonald's uses or is it, it better or is it lower quality? What's going on with that? For whatever reason, because Ashley is who she is, she wants the McDonald's sweet and sauce when she's having McDonald's products. So exactly. Yes. I, I understand that though. It makes Fort- sense. Fortunately, we had two orders of like nuggets and the kid wanted one or wanted, you know, nuggets or whatever. And he also mm-hmm. wanted sweet and sour sauce. So we gave him the bottle, the bottle one. And he doesn't know the difference because he's got five year old taste buds that don't know anything. And he's afraid to try stuff. So they're undeveloped. Taste exactly. Buds. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Although I keep mm-hmm. exposing him to things sometimes and sometimes, you know, they work. And mm-hmm. he even gave me the compliment that, that I make really good breakfast foods. So I'm like. There you go. Nice. There you nice. go. That's a high. That's high praise from a child. I, I would. I, I would agree. Like he loves the eggs that I make them. I make them pancakes, although they all like the pancakes. And we found some gluten free pancakes that actually taste good. Ah, because that's a journey. So yes, so, it is. <laughs> it, it truly is. Some other things that I'm looking forward to seeing and want to see is uh, Mortal Kombat because that looks like it'll be a lot of fun. And yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it'll be on HBO Max, just like Godzilla versus Kong, but I want to see it in the theater. In fact, I just want to just want to go out and just, you know, get lost in that universe and um, looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I'm ready to. So I love to travel and I, I haven't really gone anywhere. I've been some places like road trips and stuff where we didn't have to um, fly or we didn't have to go too, too far. Um, or make too many stops along the way, but I'm ready to travel again. I'm ready to like, I, you know, I still, even though I am fully vexed, I, you know, still take my precautions and I wear my mask and try to stay away from people even while masked. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I try to do all that stuff, but I am ready to just kind of start relaxing some of the restrictions that we've had to kind of live with because of covid um like just going over your friend's house and like with me i have a i have a small group of friends that we would like hang out with it's actually my travel group um but we are used to meeting up like for dinner much more than we than we have because we've, we've been meeting at one person's house well even though the cdc does not recommend that we kind of made a pact with one another that we're going to all take precautions and we're all going to do the right thing so that we didn't risk anybody in the group. And so, but even still, it's like, you know, for a while the CDC was saying, don't uh, mingle with folks that are outside of your household. And if you do, y'all need to do it outside. Y'all need to wear masks. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it's something that we had kind of relaxed already. So in the back of my mind, after every meeting with this group, um, which I trust, and we didn't meet that often, but after every meeting with this group, I was always thinking, okay, we met this day, so two weeks later is this date, so if I'm not having any symptoms by this date, I'm probably good, but I would still kind of stay away from my family that was actually in my bubble right. um, just to make sure that I didn't unwittingly carry something, or carry COVID to them, mm-hmm. so I'm ready to just like, just do normal things again, like meeting with my friends and not have to worry and constantly look at the calendar. Right. And keep such detailed accounts of who's exact, of or, everything. Right. Right. I mean, but it's very smart to, that you do. Cause that's, that's yeah. what the whole basis behind contact tracing. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I was very conscious about that. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to take this risk, I need to be 
as responsible with it as possible. I don't want to do something for, for such a fleeting, you know, it's important, but it's, it is fleeting. I don't want to do something um, that's going to affect other people that had nothing to do with my decision. So, um, but I'm just, it, it's things like that. We're going to the movies. I haven't been to the movies since before, like, well before COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so <laughs> now, of course, I'm like, I want to go to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, because you know? for like both of us, those are like just places that we really that that we vibe off of and just enjoy Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and it brings me joy it brings me solace like i just Mm -hmm. love that theater experience and restaurants yes we've we actually went to a restaurant Mm -hmm. sat in and ate like ordered a meal and food Mm -hmm. and just enjoyed ourselves Mm -hmm. um it still it felt a little bit weird like do do i mask on now or take it off and you know and I mean, every all these places, most of them have their their guidelines and, and yeah. restrictions and whatnot, and and I'm glad mm-hmm. that they're also taking precaution too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's all a risk. So yeah, as long as you mm-hmm. be smart about it, which I definitely am. I'm not going to go to the theater and start licking the floors because I didn't do that before. <laughs> but you know. but somebody on Twitter, you know, plainly stated it, and it just made so much sense. They're just like, you know what, I'm ready to be able to go out and just lick a stranger's face without fear <laughs> of <laughs> COVID. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. What I want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, apparently that's what people are thinking that that's going to happen. Like just going out, you know, in these public spaces, but I get it. I get it. They're, they're all concerned and, and they have every reason and right to be. And since I've already been to the theater during like the height of everything happening and, um, I do uh, like how a lot of the theaters are set up where you can't get a seat next to someone that you don't know or that doesn't come with you. So there's already Mm -hmm. uh, ways that they they're doing their part in the social distancing part. Mm -hmm. So and there's a lot less showings than there there used to be. So uh, it's I don't know. It makes me sad a little bit because we've lost so much and we've changed so much and even just the little things that you just didn't really think about very much, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's sad. And I mean, obviously there's bigger issues than going to the movies. Um, but you know, it's the little things in life that kind of keep us going a lot of times. And, you know, right. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a strange, brave new world that we are embarking mm-hmm. on. Um, I mm-hmm. find myself at the park a lot more again because of the kid and we're visiting several different parks, really uh, just playscapes mm-hmm. and some kids wearing masks, some of them not. Um, he is. We make sure that he is. And like I said, I'm, yeah. I am most of the time because I'm also combating the allergens and things out there so I can you know, continue <laughs> to not sneeze, live and breathe happily. Exactly. <laughs> However, I think I might need to upgrade and maybe even get some goggles because I forgot. I was like, oh, no, my eyes are unprotected. Like, sure, I may have sunglasses, but pollen don't care. They're just going to, you know, fly around. Right. There. Pollen do not care. Not at all. Um, I'm not sure if I want to give a PSA or um, talk about replacing Adobe because that's actually something that happened today. Which one should I go with first? Um, (laughs) PSA. PSA? Okay. So this is a PSA for basically people younger than us. I had geared this initial, uh, not even response, but it it was just a message to, I'm going to say he's 15. I really, I'm not entirely sure how old he is. Maybe 16. I don't know. But uh, I gave a ride home uh, after church to one of the, uh, the youth and, um, as we were waiting at a stoplight, I just turned to him and, and told him, I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> Don't get old. <laughs> it really sucks. Did yeah. you say that? <laughs> I, well, he just kind of looked at me like he wasn't quite sure. He kind of giggled a little bit and was like, yeah, I'm not trying to. I'm like, yeah, no, you don't get old because you're going, your, your metabolism is going to change. You're not going to be able to process foods like you used to. Um, your, your body's going to be making noises that you never knew could make it just creaking and cracking at <laughs> random times. You're uh-huh. going to be sweating for no reason, but most importantly, <laughs> there's going to be food that you love that you can no longer process properly anymore. 
Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I went to tell him what happened to me and what's why I was looking, I don't want to say miserable, but on the verge of being miserable, but you know, still kind of hiding it because I thought I could eat like a teenager for whatever reason in the last 24 hours. Well, from oh, the time I was telling him, I, uh, we found a, a pizza place in uh, mm-hmm. the city that we live in. So we mm-hmm. were like, oh, let's try this place. And mm-hmm. delicious, delicious pizza. Like mm-hmm. even the crust was delicious because some people Ooh. don't like crusts. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Anyway. I also got some mozzarella sticks, but I don't normally order because those are one of the things I feel I can make myself and much cheaper. Just go buy some mm-hmm. frozen ones at the store, throw them in the air fryer, got a party. Um, let's see. There's also quesadillas, which I haven't had in a little while. Um, chicken quesadillas, just so we're clear. Oh, yes. Um, Thanks for the clarity. Right, right. Because I mean, <laughs> just regular cheese. Yes, I could do it, but it's not as much fun. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I only had one slice of the pizza because I'm like, these, this is really for, you know, the rest of the family, but I did order my own pizza for later that night. Cause I did go work at radio and I ordered a stuffed crust pizza, but pretzel crust. So I don't Ooh. know if you see the connectivity of all the things I've been eating, which is basically bread and not, cheese, mostly cheese, but yes, bread, because <laughs> uh-huh. it's also that, that <laughs> scale of like, this has more cheese than bread and this has yes. more bread than cheese. So yes. lots of cheese, but yes, also bread, but lots of cheese. And I never felt so much. Uh, I've never visited so many porcelain thrones in like a span of like 12 hours. In <laughs> oh, my no. Life. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> and then meanwhile, See? my stomach is just like punching me from the inside, just like, and I'm like, oh, my God, what is happening? I regret so much of what I've done. <laughs> and I've called it cheesy regret because that's what was happening. So it's just because I mm. knew it was mostly that. Yes, I do have a bit of a gluten issue. Not as bad as mm-hmm. like. Ashley may have, but like mm-hmm. it was mostly the cheese, and I knew that's what it was, but I didn't think about it at the time. I was just like, "Oh my god, this is so good! Oh, this is good!" I'm just stuffing things <laughs> in my mouth like I was a child. Oh and, yeah, yeah. So it it was an interesting Sunday evening, and I just kind of just laid motionless on the bed, just oh no, <laughs> thinking about my whole entire life and how it led to this moment. Yeah, and, which is uh, where you went wrong. A bright right and i'm like well i guess it started with with the uber call but whatever um mm, sure but yeah. it's a little bit of regret because everything still tasted good it's just moderation i need to practice like i did not need mm-hmm. to eat all of the mozzarella sticks like at once mm-hmm. like, i could have spaced them out but i didn't want to do that because as you know the longer the mozzarella s- sticks sit they're not as gooey and delicious as, as they were. Right. The worse they taste, and like the worse the texture gets and everything about them just mm-hmm. goes wrong if they're not like piping hot or, you know, similar, you know, right. um, piping hot adjacent. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they can't just have set out for an hour. No, right. it's not going to work. It's not going to be the same experience. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to eat all of them an hour, three hours later. I'm still going to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I just want obviously. that enjoyment. Yes, because it, it had been like a, it's been like since COVID since I've had mozzarella sticks. Mm-hmm. I'm not blaming yeah. COVID. I'm just saying it's just a long time. It's just it's, been a while. Yeah. Yes. Same thing well, with quesadillas. So yeah. Yeah. So so my growing older um, journey has been very similar in that I I can still eat everything without any any gut issues. Thank God, knock on wood. Um, but I can't eat it too late or too fast Mm -hmm. or sometimes too slow. And (laughs) definitely what I eat matters now. I mean, definitely I'm experiencing the the metabolism slowdown. Um, but it's more so that I feel like the metabolism, I feel like, you know, whatever, I kind of expected that, Mm -hmm. but what I feel like I wasn't prepared for was the acid reflux, mm. where if I eat something after, let's say seven, that tends to be my cutoff. But if I eat something after seven, I'm going to have issues. Mm. When I lay down, I'm going to just feel it in my chest and in my throat. Mm. And it's not, like it's the worst. And fortunately, Tums works for me. Good. I know Good. I know a lot of people that Tums just doesn't work for them. And so they have to suffer through it and god god bless fortunately though tums and like flushing it out and and 
uh, just drinking a lot of water tends to help for me. Mm. One or the other, one or the other. I don't have to do both. Um, b- well, depending on what I eat, I have to do both or and just lay down. <laughs> but that's <laughs> right. like, like, what is that? I have to, I eat things and they literally try to come up on me. What kind of, you know what? Of, what that, that? That, that could probably explain why it is that I can no longer eat Chinese food. Like without like proper filling it later. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I, or, or seeing it later in the worst way. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, ugh, it's terrible. Like I've the times that, yeah. Um, but I warned my, my young companion about this and I'm like, I don't think um, other adults are going to tell you this. So that's why I'm telling this mm. to you. If you don't remember anything I've ever told you, and I mean, we've only <laughs> spoken a few times, but remember uh-huh. that please. So uh-huh. that, that is my it's PSA. Important. It, it's important. Yes. And, and I, I need the younger generation, the next generation, the zoomers out there. Cause I believe that mm-hmm. that should be the term. I know the next generation, I think it's like, I was going to say team alpha, but no, it's like, at the generation Z and then, and I believe that's the generation that I believe that, sh- that should be called zoomers because of this past year being on zoom. Um, but they need to know that like, you know, embrace your youth now eat all the junk that you want. I mean, make sure oh you burn that, that calories off because I don't, they, they will just by existing. I mean, they don't have to do anything. They just, they're just alive and it's burned off. Like what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm true I, I mean i don't want them to uh overindulge and clog up their arteries and have like heart attacks at like you know 16 we don't we, i don't mean that way i just mean you know enjoy the food now but mm-hmm. when, when it gets later learn to start to taper off learn moderation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so you can enjoy safely you know like i don't know drugs i don't know just just <laughs> <laughs> or alcohol <laughs> alcohol i should have with alcohol yes alcohol that's maybe better i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know but it was a, I, I again i'm in i'm in the psa mindset like i'm not telling you not to do it i don't care what you do i'm just i'm just saying be careful and you don't need to eat the whole pizza okay just yeah it, in fact when you get older you get wiser and you, and you already do what i already do and sometimes you order for later so yes this pizza is for now, but I'm also thinking for tomorrow. This is also tomorrow's meal or, and, you know, since you have a family, um, this is just for today because everybody is going to eat the rest of it. So whatever, you know, <laughs> there might be a slice left uh-huh. for you the next day, which, which ended up happening today because I, I did finish off the pizza that nearly killed me on Sunday. So yes. Mm. I'm sorry you had that experience and I feel your pain and I stand with you in senior solidarity (laughs) as we get older. (laughs) And I will use this as a segue into wait, where's my buttons over here? Okay. Word watch. Yes. So today's word is a word that we're all familiar with really, but I came across a video or rather uh, the kid did and um He's he watches these videos that explain things like one of them was like diarrhea, but it was the way that the this guy said it (laughs) diarrhea. Uh I don't know. It was just very just (laughs) declarative and like hmm, he's about to give us a dissertation on, on, you know, how bowel movements happen in the worst way. But Mm. this one was actually about farts and just where they come from, how they happen. But I got excited by just the origin of the word. And it's much older than I assumed it would be. Like, I thought that was something mm-hmm. like some, I don't know, 80s kids came up with. And it's just like, dude, you just farted. <laughs> oh, awesome. Peeler. So, yeah, uh-huh. um, it's been around since like the like mid centuries and uh, mid centuries, so, like a mid 18th century, maybe wow. even older than that. It's, okay. it's an ancient word comes from like yeah. Germany and Iceland. Um and it literally means to break wind. So I'm even wondering if the word itself like predates flatulence, which is, you know, the scientific grammatical, mm-hmm. like, oh, you have too much flatulence. No, it's your farting. <laughs> so, um, and apparently even going deeper into like, and I'm going to link this article in the show notes uh, because this article got really deep into it, like talking about all the different places that had the term 
or where it kind of came from, but there's all there's farting and there's fisting. Yes, they talk about like, hey, what? we know, yes, we know that this means something else for us these days, but yeah, <laughs> I think one of the differences, one of the differences, uh, oh, I mean, well, besides the fact that it, it is breaking wind, I mm-hmm. believe farting is when you make noise and fisting is when you don't. But <laughs> wow, okay. I, that was just from, and I kind of breezed through this this article rather quickly because some of it got really kind of tedious in the entomology of everything. And I'm like, okay, you're losing me because now you're breaking things down by the letter and <laughs> I don't have the time or mm-hmm. the capacity to mm-hmm. retain all of this. But mm-hmm. I found it very interesting. And I'm going to share that in the show notes because I feel it is worth it. In fact, it, a lot of their research came from a book about farting and how people back in the day found that hilarious and there's i visited the wikipedia page on farting or just fart the word and there's even like uh medieval cartoons of like people farting in each other's faces and i'm like wow like they back then crazy so yeah that's today's word nothing too deep and something that i'm pretty sure everybody knows what that is so (laughs) yes we don't need to uh harp on that anymore (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, we'll move on to um, a another thing that happened today. I was listening to a podcast about Star Trek. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I know my attention. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and it was one that I wished. I know you told me the other day if I had any podcast to recommend to you, and I think this one's called Prime Directive, and it's hosted by two of like the two funny comedians that I love listening to, and they have a podcast together that they invite guests, um, including. Um, Stacey Abrams, who also was a Trekkie. And um, I mm-hmm. think that's how I was introduced to the podcast. But uh, they were talking about on this episode how they would love if there was a Star Trek episode where they just did, like, there wasn't like, they just did the mission. There wasn't any issues. So it was almost like just a regular mission, but probably a very boring episode. But they would just have it so they could have it on in the background, like this particular episode. And I think they even kind of called it like an ambient Star Trek. So you just hear all the beeps and boops and just chatter and people walking around. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that would be great, not just for Star Trek, but for a lot of the shows that we watch. And I thought of, of course, I thought of you. I'm like, that would be perfect if they just had a, an episode of The Office where there was just a camera that was set up in the office that they work in. And just you just hear all the noise and the chatter, people you know, making phone calls or walking around and phones ringing and whatnot. And everybody's there or maybe it's just maybe slightly out of focus so they can go ahead and hire lookalikes because they're mm-hmm. all doing better and bigger <laughs> things now. But mm-hmm. um, if every show had that or if friends, for example, had an episode where it's just in central perk in the coffee house area and they're just there. Like you just hear the, the sounds like in case you need to have that vibe, like you're in a coffee house and, but specifically the central perk one. And Yeah. And I just like, hmm, that would be interesting if there is uh, a handful of episodes like that for several of the shows that we watch that take place specifically in a place that has some kind of ambient noise. I don't really need one for like, I don't know, a show that takes place in somebody's house most of the time. I don't think that would be as fun. Mm-hmm, or not mm-hmm. even fun, but, you know, that kind of background ambience noise. Right, right. Which is very popular on YouTube. So that was just a, a, an idea or a thought that I had. Anything interesting you, thought. Yeah. Anything you wanna you would want to see in that kind of vein? I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, nothing immediately comes to mind. Um yeah, I think you covered it. Hmm. Cause I got you with the office one, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's all I want ever in life, all the time, a hundred percent, always. Mm-hmm. I knew it. Um, <laughs> I have no segue for it. So we're just going to get into our black history fact for today. Black history. Black history. Black history. Black history. Black history. Facts. facts. And I actually have a few. And that's because I found a new Twitter. Well, it's not a new Twitter account, but it is an account that I wasn't following previously. It's at African Archives, and I found a couple tweets that I really found interesting. I'm going to go backwards. One is happy, and one is not, and then I go back to something that I really liked. So 
<laughs> so that's why I'm giving you a, a couple of them because they're just literally tweets that I'm going to read to you now. Eartha Kitt, mm-hmm. conceived mm-hmm. by rape, born mm-hmm. on a cotton plantation, mm-hmm. spoke five languages, mm-hmm. and sang in seven. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Amazing. I didn't know any of that. So I was just just amazed. Did by you all not? Of them. Oh, I didn't wow. know. No. Wow. What a good day for you. So I I didn't really know all this until maybe, I mean, rec- in recent years. But um, when I did, I'm just like, OK, she was already amazing and already such a powerhouse. But then um, you learn about where she came from and how she even got here on this planet. And it's like, OK, she was much more than I ever, ever considered her to be. Um, I'm so happy for you to like <laughs> learn this about her. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had no idea. I did not know. And I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. or just um, no doubt she has a storied life that I think at some point I will go deeper into to learn mm-hmm. everything because, you know, what are those other languages? I must know. Uh, the, the tweet does go on to say she recorded one of uh, the greatest Christmas hit songs, mm-hmm. uh, Santa <laughs> Baby, which... Mm-hmm. I will be objective here. Um, it is my least favorite. <gasps> what? Okay. I, okay. I'll, I'll, I understand that. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're backpedaling there. It's like, oh, okay. 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 okay well, but. I'm trying to learn and trying to project that just because I have a difference of opinion, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. doesn't that doesn't mean that somebody else's opinion about that same thing is wrong. It's mm. just a difference of opinion. So true. This is true. It's true. Yes. But the judgment is still there. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's no judgment. Mm. There, there's really no judgment. I think I only love her version of that song. And I only love it. Um, not so much because it's her. Because I, I think I loved only her version before I knew her history and her upbringing and things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's not my favorite Christmas song ever. I oh, just love yeah. her version of it. So. I mean, if I were to listen to the song, it would be her version because there are other versions of it in there. I don't want to say they're all terrible, but like they're not pleasant for me. Uh, no. And, yeah. And it's That's never the, the ones I hear song. either. I it's, it is. Right. It's, it's right. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll have to get it. We'll, we'll bring it back up during Christmas season and we'll kind of get into it like the best ones and the worst ones, which I know we got this had kind of already discussed. I think both topics of both like the worst Christmas songs and the best ones. But, <laughs> yes. But you know, we'll do our version of it and kind of just like, okay, this one, this, this, this terrible, but because there are some other ones that I absolutely hate. And then if you're ever in ever work in retail, then you really, really hate them because it is nonstop. Like that playlist is maybe, yeah. I don't know, hour and a half long. And then it just loops over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same like 10 songs, maybe. Yes. And 10 exactly, because you'll still hear the same song, but somebody else is singing it. Maybe a little better, maybe a little worse. <laughs> yeah. And yes. Clock in and like, and then, yeah, that's when Santa bait. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, it's already <laughs> here. And you, you, well, yeah. they can definitely get more play and more, I guess, um, use or whatever out of the songs if they just switch up like the style of the song and who sings it. So it doesn't really matter if you hear Silent Night, si- Silent Night, Silent mm-hmm. Night three times in, you know, a 10 song ratio or whatever if three different artists are singing it in three different styles then you're kind of like the, the average customer or whoever is hearing it mm-hmm. it's not going to be listening that closely or right. you would think they wouldn't so anyway i could go on i mean I, this, I, 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 it is it is a really good like this is something yes. that we can dig into because it's a thing it's a thing that actually makes me feel better about having like the same song in my playlist, my Christmas playlist that is available, mm-hmm. like you can mm-hmm. find it on Patreon. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I have like three versions of Silent Night because it is sung three different ways. So, yes, but we will move on and sadly to <laughs> something that is not so happy or Christmassy, but something I had learned today because I did not know this. But Africans were kidnapped from Africa and brought to be exhibited in the human zoos, and many mm-hmm. of them died quickly. The human mm-hmm. zoo died out after World War II. Oddly, it was Hitler who first banned them. Uh, the first was in Belgium in 1958. 
I don't think the first zoo, but I think the first one that banned him, perhaps. I don't know. Man, that wasn't that long ago. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Um, but that was pretty sad. So I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. But the one that I did want to share that I did not know also today, uh, Dr. Huey P. P. Newton, because they don't want us to know he had a PhD in social science. Hmm. Okay. They want us to think he was just some ignorant double ma- or troublemaking thug. His doctoral dissertation was entitled War Against the Panthers, A Study of Repression in America. Mm. Hmm. So, yes, that was something I did not know is that he had a PhD. So he is Dr. Huey P. Newton. I never knew that. Wow. Like, I never knew that. So, yes, I was leading up to that being the actual, I mean, all three of them, yes, were facts, but <laughs> that was the fact I was most excited about. I'm like, ah, oh, I want to share this. I want to share this one, too. So I'm like, well, it's my show. I can do what I want. So mm-hmm. that's right. That's why we got three facts today. Um, nice. I, I do have, um, oh, let me get back to my jingle because I'm trying to get through the rest of the segments that I have. Uh, where is it? Um Good morning, Sheboygan. Yes, I have actual Sheboygan news today. Once I find where that article went to. Because I lost it. Oh, I lost it because I was looking up the Black Dog episode. Uh, Not the Black Dog. (laughs) Um, Metalhead. Uh, I will come back to it later. What else do I have on the notes here while I look for that? Um... Yes, replacing Adobe and mentors is what I wrote down because uh, apparently you can, there are some free versions of a lot of the Adobe products. And I think there's like even a cancellation fee if you have the cloud, which I currently do, do a lot of the stuff I have. And I'm like, hmm, maybe there are some free alternatives. And I had this memory of speaking with someone who had taught me a lot of the a lot of what I've learned about like TV production and not so much audio production, but TV production. And at one point I had told him I was using this one program called like Sony Vegas. And he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, nobody uses that. Like, mm-hmm. like no professionals or whatever use that. But it was on this list of free software that you could use. And I've, I've used it enough to know that like, hey, if I need, if I'm in a pinch or in a bind or whatever, I know that's available to me. Um, I also use some other ones like Resolve, but that kind of always stuck with me along with some other things that he has said, like back in the times that I've actually uh, looked at him as a mentor. And I feel like we've, you and I have had this conversation conversation before about kind of Mm -hmm. either maybe outgrowing mentors or just kind of letting them go and getting new ones. Because yeah, yeah, growth basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I do feel that at one point I pretty much did outgrow him. Plus he Hmm. had shot down one of my, um, Someone I look up to because only because he had a bad experience with her. And that was mm-hmm. uh, the great, my birthday twin, Oprah Winfrey. So he, you know, kind of like, yeah, she's not a great person. You should find better people to look up to. So I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, not, not a, it's, it's okay. If you've got a mentor that you seem to like, time to move on. And I'm wondering about that with, in regards to um, Adobe as well, because I have had a couple little snags here and there, but mm-hmm. I haven't really researched to look elsewhere. Um, and it's a whole, it's just time to invest, investing in, in finding new products to use. With that said, I'm also thinking about um, starting a Twitch account and maybe even Ooh. doing some stuff over there or even doing the podcast over there too. So nice. Dear and Dubian, I'm looking to you to see if you might be interested in that as well. I mean, I still may get an account just to play around with it and figure it out. But, you know, get back at me. Let me know. Because mm-hmm. I'm curious. Right, right. I would <laughs> love to see it. Okay. Well, I'll mark that down as at least one. I for it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. This episode is brought to you by Daddy's Dairy. Uh, I'm, <laughs> this was a segue I meant to do earlier when we were talking about traveling. So I'll say maybe like by the third time you come up to Connecticut or whatever, or the New England to come visit. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully we can get Birdo. We'll all go travel to Daddy's Dairy. So you can I don't all know, see it. I don't know that I believe. Okay. I believe that it, that it exists, but I don't believe that it exists. So I kind of... I need to see it for myself, you know, for right. it to actually sink in and take root. 
Exactly. And the other reason I'm bringing it up is because that has been one of my consistent like sellers on my T public store is mm-hmm. the daddy's dairy shirt or tank top or whatever is happening. And I am so curious that I want to go and see if the employees are wor- are wearing them. <laughs> <'Cause> mm. I, <laughs> I mean, because I have no idea like who else would be buying these shirts and right. why. And that's the only correlation I can make. <laughs> and then I would just love to walk into the store and find that, I don't know, maybe half of the employees that are working there are wearing mm-hmm. the shirts that I designed based on their own store because I just happen to you know, see it from across the street from my hotel room, the one that was haunted. So yes. Mm, right. Right. And then, <laughs> so yeah, on a related note too, on the t-shirts, cause I meant to do this when Stephanie was here, but she is also the inspiration for the um, living singles or living singles, living single t-shirt, uh, which pretty much just spawned the rest of them, such as the Martin uh, girlfriends, um, I'm not sure if Golden Girls, I, I think maybe one of one or two of those may have sold, but because of the renewed interest in those shows and because of the comic book that she wrote, uh, I was like, hey, this this might be an interesting T-shirt, which she was kind of an inspiration for for me to even design it. So um, I meant to shout her out on that when she was here. But that's actually been one of my top sellers as well is the living mm-hmm. singles and Martin mm-hmm. uh, girlfriends. And um, they only took down one of them. Oh, two of them. They took down my Seinfeld one and they took down the Scott Pilgrim versus the world one, which is one of my favorites. And I'm glad that I actually bought one for myself, but they took it mm-hmm. down. It's, it doesn't have any images. It just has all the characters names and mm-hmm. some of them crossed out. So nice. which, which you'd understand and you will one day when you watch the movie, why they're crossed out. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I don't know why I did an evil laugh. There's nothing evil about it. <laughs> but evil laughs are always appropriate, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> I did write down um, cicadas because I've been hearing a lot about them. And I actually put it under the spookum zone only because I heard someone describe them. Well, someone back in the way, way days why their eyes are red. Now, first of all, are you familiar with cicadas and their whole hype and lore so somewhat i mean i live with them not like in my house but <laughs> you've got pet cicadas and you ever told me <laughs> no never um but i'm i'm familiar with some of the lore and how uh but please refresh me because they're also an insect and i i categorize that stuff so and mm-hmm. often it's like categorized in, in a way where like in my head, it's like a SpongeBob brain where it's in a shelf and I push it in the very back of that, you know, shelf or the following cabinet and then I lock it. So gotcha. it's, it's there, but it's not available right now. <laughs> so we need to re- like uh, let it come back out because it's been nesting back Ugh, in that. <laughs> that sounds so terrible, but yes. But it's been nesting in the back of your mind for like 13, 17 years, perhaps. And now it needs to come back out to, sure. to brood and to mate and make and call their song and make some more little babies or whatever what they Ugh. do. Because, <laughs> yes, that's what they do every 13 to 17 years. And I was like, I was confused at the number, but I watched a video recently mm-hmm. and um Brood X is what this year's batch will be called. And apparently this will be a big batch. So, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Um, however, your state wasn't highlighted for the ones that have them, but apparently I guess there's some spillover. So you'll probably hear them in the distance coming for you and eating your wildlife, oh, your, your grass and whatever Gross. things you might be planting. Um, even if they're not doing that, you'll just hear them and might run oh. into them as they, you know, try to mate with their women folk. Um, the part that I found interesting that was a little bit creepy is the fact that the lore about them with their beady red eyes. Oh. Is the- <laughs> <laughs> this is so disgusting. I didn't even get to the <gasps> creepy part yet. Um, their beady red eyes are that way because they've been under the ground so long and they're apparently they are facing hell and staring into hell for 13 to 17 <laughs> years. So that is why their eyes are bleeding red. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So they can come back out and then stare you down as they uh-huh. and scare you. And as they st- serenade you to the pits of hell. 
Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, they're just doing their thing because they're trying to play the great, the, the best song to get. Um, I mean, it, they could be playing their version of like Casey and Jojo to, you know, kind of <laughs> woo whoever to his, uh-huh. like, hey, you know, hey, sweet lady, come over, come, you know, doing, doing what they do. Um, but they have to do it louder than the other guy because they could be doing um, like a whole. I don't know, boys to men rendition, and maybe that's not <laughs> quite hitting it. So they gotta right, get Usher right. over here. So they right, you know, right. They gotta get louder and louder till you know somebody belts out some Luther Vandross. I'm like, oh, that's the one we're making babies right now. <laughs> so all of that's happening, but it all sounds like some kind of buzzing to the sound to the decibels of like a motorcycle or an airplane, and it's it could be deafening. And um, hard cut to you're able to eat these creatures if you would like. Uh, oh what <laughs> are you kidding me are you serious i am absolutely serious there are websites that have recipes where you oh. can cook them um i've seen pictures where they are baked into cookies <gasps> no. um, they are like added as you know toppings to salads um, oh god why are you telling me this why what is the purpose what is the meaning because what is the reason because I'm trying to prepare people because this is what's going to happen. And this is one way to defend yourself. So if you see them, just show them a fork and they'll be like, okay, we, <laughs> we you know, we'll back away quietly or well, as quietly as you can. Cause we still got to do our thing. We still so, got to do our thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of warning you and warning our dear listener that this is something that could be happening soon. If you are in the Ugh. northeastern region of the United States, this is oh, something that happens. God. However, however, the state right next to you, I don't remember what it is, um, to the east. What is it, Missouri? I don't remember. No, they're north of me. Okay. Tennessee? Tennessee is east, yes. Okay. I think that's But they're not it. northeast, though. So, so well, we whatever be- whatever's directly east. I mean, it's right there because like they they were showing the map, and then like uh, a few of them were flying over like directly uh, to Little Rock. Oh um, my gosh! So like, so I'm still doomed, no matter what. Is that what you're saying? That's that's trying with the paint. That's the picture I'm trying to paint for you. That it's, <sighs> that they're coming for you. Like they're literally. I feel like they have my name on their mind, and they're coming for me, and they won't stop until they find me specifically. That's what it feels like. I mean, you said the words. I didn't say them. I, I wanted to, but and that's what you were implying, though. Come right. on, let's be real. The only, the only solace, and this is for you know, not for everybody, and unfortunately not for you. But like, if you go to the beach, because <laughs> they uh-huh. don't like, they don't like. There's no water. There's no trees over there. But I mean, you're landlocked, so you're just. <sighs> stuck. Well, I mean, we have lakes and no, no, they like lakes. Things. They're, 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 they're okay with that. Oh, yep, they like that. They are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Of course, they are. Yep, because they they've got their own beach chairs and everything, so they're just like camp out over there. But <laughs> lake chairs comfy. for lakes, yeah. So Ugh, there's Lord other there's other things over there because it's a lake beach. It's not the same thing, it, right? You know right. You know this. Oh, I know. There's a mm. huge difference. And I mean, I remember as a kid, they they were trying to get us to like, hey, let's go to the beach, and and you know, and we go to this lake, and I'm like, this is not a beach because <laughs> <laughs> there are other things living in this water that's not in a beach. So that like, is I, not how beaches work. I mean, but beaches do have living things in them. But I get what you're saying. Not yeah. like catfish and snakes and things like that. See, you saw those or, or mentioned those. Yeah. All I saw was like water spiders. So, yeah. Oh, I'll never mention those things <laughs> willingly. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I found my, my article because I was like, oh, this is nice. Uh for uh sheboygan news i'm not gonna play it again but electric scooters <laughs> or i'm sorry it's a question electric scooters coming to sheboygan Ooh, um big news they, it is big news i'm actually a little excited because we have an electric scooter well ken has one but i it was suggested that i could ride it but i have not attempted to yet mm-hmm. um, the neighborhood kids all want it but we're like no nope, we're gonna put it away because yeah we may never see it again anyway right right yes uh, they haven't been without controversy. Uh, what is that? The fancy way people say controversy. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, controversy. Wow. <laughs> well, there's there was a fancy uh, co- controversy. I don't know. They or they shortened it or made it weird. Uh, I don't know. Uh, cities in Wisconsin where electric scooters have appeared in the past have been 
have had to deal with developing new rules and regulations regarding them. Sheboygan is now poised to be the next in line as Bird Rides Incorporated, which supplies bird scooters, hopes to open their rental business in Sheboygan. A a direct referral to the licensing hearings and public safety committee was made so discussions can be had. Uh, language in the document suggests that once one company begins operations, others follow, and those scooters can have adverse impacts on public health, safety, and welfare. I don't know how or why, because they're generally harmless, but whatever. Right. Hmm. The, st- the state of Wisconsin has a statute permitting those rentals and contains regula- regulations that the Sheboygan Common Council has found to be appropriate to handle those concerns, but it's up to the city to decide exactly where the scooters can and can't operate. The ordinance being considered on Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. Assuming the measures pass committee, it will then be up to full common council to make scooter rentals a reality. And I hope that it does. Oh, I'm sorry. I did miss an important part there. Um, Oh, yes. It would prohibit their use on sidewalks, uh, riverfront boardwalks, and on north and south piers, because that's important. And speed must be 25 miles an hour or less. Other language uh, regarding... Parking, insurance, and licensing will also be discussed. So I hope that works out because yeah. it seems to be a nice thing. No? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seems like a good thing, I think. I think so, too. I think so, too. But that is the last that I have um, this time around. I'm trying to make sure that I didn't skip anything. I do have more spookums, but I'm going to save it for next episode because it's a good one. I want to get all the details just for you, Courtney. Thank you so much. You are very welcome because you're my dearest friend, dear Courtney, Lillian Hinton, because I know that that (laughs) matters to you. Mm, So important to me. (laughs) Do you have any recommendations, any, anything that you want people to check out? Um, Recipes involving cicadas. Oh gosh. I'll be, I'm going to try to burn that out of my memory. Um, I am currently reading um, a couple of books, but one of them is called Her Final Hour. It is a murder mystery. I think it's the second in a series. Um, I think it's a Gina Hart um, mystery series, but this is the second book in that series that I'm starting with. Um, but because I like to be chaotic, chaotic sometimes. Um, but it's a really good book. It's an easy, quick read, in my opinion. And if you're looking for something that is maybe out of your um, normal reading um, purview, then I definitely recommend it. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, otherwise, you can find me on the Twitters at I am K Hinton. And can't wait to talk with you. All right. Sounds great. Uh, I will recommend um, a movie I just watched last night, which kind of stuck with me. That's why I'm going to mention it here. It's called Words on Bathroom Walls. Uh, it was uh, actually Ashley who who decided to watch. I don't really know. I'm not sure if she looked for it. I don't know. But that's what we ended up watching. And um, I don't know what's going on with me lately because this is like the second thing we've watched that started tugging on some like heartstrings. I'm like, what's happening? I'm feeling things it's your age (laughs) uh, yeah i think so yeah i should have worn that to my young companion the other day um to think you'll start becoming sensitive to things just be careful and guard your heart guard your your plate (laughs) and uh keeping it together i can't even talk about why it was you know getting to me because it's a bit of a spoiler so i'm not not even going to mention it gotcha trying to remember the other thing that almost you know kind of made me a little weepy but whatever uh but i do recommend that it is on amazon prime so go look for it there came out last year i knew nothing about it and then she turned it on and next thing i know i'm like what's gonna happen next because i had no idea but it was good it was good um and that's all for recommendations for right now. Follow me on all things at Indube. Go to Indube.com. Tell someone you value that you value them. Live without regrets. Oh, before I forget, Indube.com, please keep an eye on that because I will be returning to blogging very soon. So there's a lot of things that I may want to discuss and I all may right. not say it here. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Secrecy. Got it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And uh, yeah, got to get those uh, writing chops back to going. And uh, please wash your legs, your face, the bottoms of your feet, the undersides of your dishes. Get vaccinated and wear your masks, sometimes two if necessary, like I do. Um, I've been your benevolent host, T. Stone Watson. And remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. No! <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Indu podcast, which was recorded from the south side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive, and is part of the Indu network. Want more Indu? Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Indu and on Facebook at Indu Pod. You can contact us and send Ask Indu questions by emailing indupod at gmail.com. Want to support or donate? Find the T Public Store or become a patron on Patreon, where subscribing gives you perks and extra things from the Indub Network. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and share the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever else podcasts are found. And of course, visit Indub.com for all of this and much more. Thank you so much for letting us entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Until next time. Use your words, Chief. <laughs> Good boy. This has been another 3SFX production.